Oh, what up? This is a new episode right here. This will be volume six of my rap album update. You know what I'm saying? You guys should know that I'll be reviewing classic hip hop albums nonstop. You know what I mean? This album review right here is a request from my homeboy Marquise Flores. Shout out to him. He been asking me to do a review on this album not too long ago. I was going to do a review on this album yesterday, but I had a lot of you know business to take care of, so I was busy as fuck. Never got a chance to do it. So, but anyways, since I got nothing to do, might as well make this review. You know what I mean? Um, the album that we're gonna talk about for the day would have to be this album right here, Tupac's first posthumous album. Are you still down? Remember me, released in 1997. Yup, it's about time I'm doing a review on this album right here. You know what I mean? Y'all, gosh, must know who Tupac is. Hands down, one of the greatest MCs of all time. I mean, the dude is a fucking legend. One of my favorite MCs of ever. You know what I'm saying? He's in my top five, top 10, top 20, top 25, top 50, top 100, you name it. You know, he put out nothing but classics. You know, he put out albums like, you know, fucking Tupacalypse Now, Strictly for My Niggas, Thug Life, Me Against the World. Just like, hands down, my favorite album that I ever did in his career. All Eyes on Me, the Don Clement 97 8 Theory. You know what I mean? And um, he was, he's a very successful MC, you know, actor, poet, activist. You no, know, he's very, con he was very controversial, but his impact. And his legacy still stands to this day. You know, he came out with the All Eyes on Me movie a couple months ago. You know, the disrespect that happened to him from fucking Funk Master Flex and WAP 100, all that bullshit. You know what I mean? It was getting real crazy around that period. You know what I mean? But, um, I'm reviewing this album. In fact, on Saturday, March the 20th anniversary of this album. So this album just turned 20 years old, you know what I mean? The album came out on November 5th, 19, no, November 25th, 1997, excuse me. So today is November 29th, you know what I mean? 2017. Um, like I said, this is the very first posthumous album, you know, from Tupac's estate. This album was released one year after Tupac passed away. So um, I'm a, before you know, get into the whole, you know, the album and shit. Let me start off with the singles, right? The album only has two singles. The singles has albums known for Do For Love and I Wonder If Heaven Got a Ghetto. Both have videos for it, by the way. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Before this album came to life, um, y'all gosh must know what happened in 1996. You know, Tupac um, passed away in Las Vegas due to a shooting, you know, coming from the MGM Grand, you know, you know, it was like video surfacing when he beat up, you know, Southside Crip, you know, Orlando Anderson, you know, Suge Knight and them, you know, beat up the guy in, you know, the casino and shit. You know, Pac went to go change his clothes, you know, ran with Suge to, um, club, trying to go to Club 662. You know, that was like the Duff Row Club at the time. And, um, you know, Pac and Suge was like talking to some girls in traffic until, you know, the car came up, you know shot Tupac and you know Tupac you know was pronounced dead and it was like a sad day for hip hop you know the man died too young he was only 25 years old you know what I mean so just left the world in shambles you know what I mean like left the rap game you know crazy around that period you know what I'm saying so um Tupac passed away in 96 so in 1997 well there was a lot of rumors about Tupac have like a bunch of music in his vaults, like unreleased stuff. So what um his mom, Afini Shakur did, rest in peace by the way, you know, she started a record label called Amaru Entertainment, which this um is released under, you know what I mean? You no, know, she had the rights to all the Tupac songs. So what she did is that they put out an album you know, full of collection, full of um, demos and unreleased tracks that was supposed to be on some of Tupac's albums, but never made it to the cuts. Maybe it was the cuts for sample clearances or late lyrical content and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So you could finally get a chance to hear them on this album. You know what I mean? So 
Yeah, this is the first posthumous album from Pac. You know what I mean? I'm not the biggest fan of posthumous albums. Reason being because, like, all they trying to do is tamper and trying to fuck up the original, you know, version of the original song that was made by that person. I mean, some can be good, but some at the same time, like, they would make some of the fucking beats, you know, put artists on, you know, the rappers or singer songs that was not associated with them. Some might have been associated with them, but some not when it's a, if it was a lot, you know what I mean? But on this album right here, you don't get that, you know what I mean? Like you, there's not that much guest appearances, you know what I mean? Like, um, but, you know, out of all the posthumous Tupac albums, this is actually my favorite one out of the whole, you know, bunch because, like, I'm a, I, I just love the whole atmosphere on this album, you know what I mean? And, um, on this album right here, it features songs that Tupac recorded before, way before the whole East Coast and West Coast shit. And way before he joined Duff Row, you know what I'm saying? This album right here, you know, featured some of the songs that um Tupac recorded when he was with, you know, Digital Underground, you know, the Tupacalypse Now, Strictly for My Niggas, Thug Life, and Me Against the World, you know what I'm saying? So, those songs right there that was recorded from those sessions are appeared on this album right here, you know what I mean? So, yeah, this is the album, you know what I mean? Are you still down? Remember me. You know what I'm saying? The producers on this album are Afini Shakur, who is the executive producer on the album. You no know, Tupac's mother. Lisa Smith Putnam. Tony Pizarro. Action. Chu. Duff Jeff. Very dope producer. Slash MC. DJ Daryl. Warren G. Y'all guys must know a deal about Warren G. Uncle Ed A. Hafiz. Johnny J. Rest in peace, Lay Law from Above the Law of Fame, Law Squad, Noah Stretch, you know, they was affiliated with Tupac, Levant Marcus, Michael Mosley, QD3, Quincy Jones' son, Quimmy Quim, Chris Rozier, Conrad Rozier, Ricky Rose, So Shock and Carlin, and Tupac himself. All right. The guest appearances on this album are um, Action, Stretch. Rest in, rest in peace, by the way. It's on um, the stretch from Live Squad. Val Young, um, YMV, Richie Rich, underrated MC from the Bay Area. Big Psych from Thug Life, rest in peace. Spice One, underrated MC. Black Street, Drama Cidal, or AKA The Outlaws. Dave Hollister, Maxi from Brownstone. Yaki Gaddafi, rest in peace. You know what I mean? So, those are the guest appearances on this album, you know what I mean? Okay, let me show you what the album looks like. This album cover looks like. Very dope album cover. It's like a little picture of Tupac. Very dope. I actually like, you know, the whole album design, you know what I mean? Because it fits the album's atmosphere, you know what I mean? The back. Um, by the way, this is actually a double disc album, so it's like a two disc album. You know, you got disc one with 13 tracks and disc two with 13 tracks, so it's like 26 songs in one album. You know what I mean? So, this is the disc one right here. You know. Disc two. All right, jewel case. No, I mean, nothing to it. You know what I'm saying? All right, album cover back. You see, like a portrait, like a drawing of Tupac in the Vincent Van Gogh style. You know what I mean? Very dope. Open it up. See like a little dialogue from Tupac's mother, Afini Shakur, the late great Afini Shakur. Rest in peace. See a picture of Pac right here with a blunt. You know what I'm saying? Open it up. It's like the track listing. Disc one. Track listing. 
from this too. It's like the Tupac logo right here. Very dope. Like, you know, the production credits, shout outs, thank yous and shit. You know what I mean? Let's see, right here. See like the little Tupac gear that um the short lived Tupac Forever gear back in nineteen ninety seven, like a year after he passed away. It's like T shirts and shit. Well, rip. I got this used from FYE, like uh I think around like five dollars or something like that. It was cheap, you know what I mean? It's like the little Tupac signature. Alright. Okay. All right, let's start off with disc one, track number one, Redemption. That's like a little intro, just starting off the album. Hear like a little acoustic guitar playing. Hear like, you know, Chopped and Screw last from Tupac and shit like that. You know what I mean? Very dope intro right there. You know, definitely sets the tone off the album. Track number two, Open Fire. Fucking dope ass song right there. Great way to start the album. Definitely love the beat for that shit. You know, Tupac fucking killed that joint. No, just Tupac just doing his gangster shit on that joint right there. You know what I mean? Just talking about killing niggas and shit. Whoever fuck with him, you gonna lay them down. You know what I mean? You no, know, talking about running from the cops. You know what I'm saying? Fucking sick. Definitely like that joint, man. Um, track number three. Are you still down? Remember me. Another one of my favorite tracks on this album. Like the beat for that shit is very dope. Just a brag of those little song. You know what I'm saying? You know nothing to it. Pop did his thing. Definitely love that joint a lot. You know what I mean? I can go on and on and on about that track. Um, track number four, Hellraiser, featuring Stretch and Val Young. Fucking love that song right there. That song's the shit. You know what I mean? Definitely like that beat. You know what I'm saying? You know, Mama Raisa, Hellraiser. That shit goes in. You know what I mean? I definitely play that joint front to back every time when I play this album. You know what I'm saying? Um, track number five, Thug Style. Another dope track right there. Definitely like the beat for that shit. You know, Tupac, like I said, like doing his gangster shit as he known for. You know what I mean? Fucking sick. Um, track number six, Where Do We Go From Here? Interlude. Just like a little interlude. You hear like a deep voice of Tupac, you know, just speaking his mind. You know what I mean? With that Boosie Collins sample. I forgot the name of it, but I heard, but it's a very dope, familiar song. If you like a P Funk fan, you guys must know the joke I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Um, that's like a little interlude, you know what I'm saying? Nothing to it. Track number seven, I wonder if Heaven Got a Ghetto, the disc one album version. One of my favorite songs for this fucking album. To me, this album version, the disc one version, the one that I uploaded on my channel, I like that one a lot better than the um the single. Version. Although the single version is dope, but the album version is way better because it definitely fits this album very perfectly. With that fucking beat that just gives me a fucking chills every time I listen to that shit. You know what I mean? So, you know, Tupac just talking about, like, you know, how, you know, the, the ghetto is full of, you know, bullshit, you know, with violence, you know, people getting killed, you know, drugs, you know, poverty. Like, you had to deal with all the type of issues that's going on in the world today. So you wonder if what what would heaven you know be like you know what I'm saying? So fucking love that track right there. Pac fucking murdered that joint. You know what I mean? Um, track number eight, nothing to lose. Another dope song right there. You know what I mean? Just nothing to it. Uh, track number nine, I'm getting money. Very dope song. You know what I mean? Tupac is talking about. You no, know, you just wake up in the morning. You know what I mean? Trying to make ends meet. You know, do we got to do just to get the paper. You know what I'm saying? Um, track number 10, A Lot of Kick It, featuring Richie Rich. Um, dope track right there. Definitely like the beat from Warren G. You know, Tupac and Richie Rich both did their thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, they made a song together called Niggas Done Change off Richie Rich's um, seasoned veteran album. It was drawn back in 1996. A very dope album right there. Love the fucking song. You no know, niggas done change. That's a classic. You no know, Tupac, his verse on that song. He talking about predicting his death, his future. You know what I mean? But in this song right here, it's a braggadocious track. You know what I mean? I actually like. I actually fucking love this song. You know what I mean? Definitely like the beat. 
you know what I mean? Like that shit goes in. Um, track number um eleven. Fuck all y'all. It's self-explanatory. Tupac just saying fuck everybody. You know what I'm saying? Whoever has who are very envious with him, who are not with him, it's against him. So he's like, fuck the world. You know what I mean? Um, track number twelve. Let them things go. That's like a little party track right there. You know what I mean? You know, just like a fun type track. You know what I mean? That's a cool song. Um, the last track of track of the this one definition of a thug nigga. Yeah, track number thirteen. Definition of a thug nigga. One of my favorite songs in this album right here. Fucking love that beat from Warren G. That shit is fucking bananas, yo. And in fact, that song actually appeared on the Poetic Justice soundtrack. Um, very dope movie, very dope soundtrack. You know, the movie has, you know, Tupac, Janet Jackson, Joe Torrey, Regina King. Um, dope film by John Singleton, by the way. Underrated, if you ask me. No definition of a thug, nigga. You know, Tupac, you know, just talking about, you know, what he have to do, what he doing with an everyday struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like, from the thug's point of view, you know what I mean? Like, with, with how life goes on for him, you know what I mean? Fucking love that track. I could just go on and on and on about that shit. You know what I mean? So, that was this one right here for of the Are You Still Down album. Now, disc two. Okay, track number one. Ready for whatever. Featuring Big Psych. Fucking dope ass joint right there. You know what I mean? Big Psych, he fucking did his thing. Rest in peace, Big Psych. You no know, part of you know, the whole thug life. You know, the outlaws and shit like that. You no know, big psych, he passed away last year. I want to say rest in peace to Psych. You know what I mean? He's a very underrated lyricist right there. Dude definitely did his thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, track number um two, when I get three, that's like a cool song. You know what I mean? Like you know, hear Tupac in a like a um a chopped and screwed voice. He's just like telling motherfuckers like, once he get out of jail, he's gonna start trouble again. You know what I mean? Like he don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So, that's what I got from the track. You know what I mean? Um, track number three. Hold on. Be strong. That's a fucking dope ass song right there. Definitely love the fucking beat. It definitely has that East Coast vibe to it. Because you gotta understand, Tupac is actually from New York. So, you have to, you know, picture that. This album right here, which I'm gonna get into after I finish off the tracks. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, this song right here... I fucking love this song a lot. I definitely love the message. You know what I mean? Like, just telling motherfuckers, just telling people, like, you know, wherever you do, just stay strong. You know what I mean? Don't let nobody get you down. So, like, I definitely, like, I definitely enjoy this song a lot when I first heard it. Um, track number four, I'm Losing It, featuring Spice One and Big Sight. One of my favorite songs of this album. Fuck, yo. Motherfucking God, Spice One, he fucking killed that shit. I don't care what nobody says. But Pac and Spice One, they both did that joint justice. But Spice One's verse, though, is fucking crazy when I first heard it. You know, he's talking about his gun and shit like that. Like, yo, fucking sick. You know what I mean? Like, that, yo, this song right here goes in. Like, you gotta hear that song for yourself. Track number five, Fake Ass Bitches. Another dope banger right here. Like, Pac just fucking went off in that shit. He just talking about these fucking ignorant ass motherfuckers who just act like fucking stuck up bitches nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't fucking, like, trust these niggas. Like, it, you, we all see these fake ass motherfuckers on the internet or out in the streets. Like, this shit right here, that song, I could just fucking play a song every motherfucking day. Oh, yeah. That's how dope the song is. Track number seven. No, yeah, track number six, excuse me, Do For Love. That was like the second and the last single off the album. One of my favorite songs of this album, one of my favorite Tupac tracks of all time. You know, use that Bobby Caldwell sample, What Would You Do For Love. Definitely like the video, like an animated, you know, Tupac. Fucking dope as shit. You know, it's like a little a romance track in a way. You know what I'm saying? Talking about, you know, his girlfriend and shit like that. Like, what would she do if she loved him? You know what I mean? It's like a love affair, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Track number seven, en Enemies With Me, featuring John Macidal, or aka The Outlaws. Um, that was a very dope track right there, but I like the um OG version 
you know, they used the big pun, Raven the Heart sample. That's a fucking dope ass track. I'm not the biggest fan of the Outlaws. Cause reason being because every time you know the Outlaws make a song with Pac, they kind of ruin it for me. Except for you know Hussein Fatal and Yaki Kadaki. They're fucking dope, by the way. Rest in peace. Edie, um, Castro, Young Noble, and Napoleon. They're okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really I'm not really I don't really um fuck with the outlaws like that, to be honest with you. You know what I'm saying? But they actually did a thing on the song. You know what I'm saying? That I, I actually like that track a lot. Um, track number eight, Nothing But Love. That's like a very dope track right there. Just a braggadocio track. Um, track number nine, 16 on Duff Row. One of my favorite songs of this album. Tupac just talking about his experience. Then like Duff Row, like in jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, like a 16-year-old trying to, you know... Making his first time in, you know, prison, pretty much. Like, he got to experience the bullshit that's going on. Fucking love that song. Probably one of my favorite, like, like my top five favorite songs this album, if you ask me. Um, track number... Yeah, track number 10. I wonder if Heaven Got a Ghetto, the hip-hop version. Yes, the single, the video version. That was, like, the first single off the album... There is a video for that, um, very dope video. See, like, you know, like a, a person who's pretending to be Pac, like, in New Mexico, just walking around in different places, you know what I mean? That's fucking amazing. Um, this version right here, like I said, it was very dope. I like the disc one album version a lot better, you know what I mean? But this is the version that almost everybody knows about, like, the remix, if you get what I'm saying. You know I me, mean? but that's fucking dope. I actually like this track a lot. You know I me. Mean? Um, track number eleven, "When I Get Free." So that's like the sequel to "When I Get Free." In my opinion, this one is a lot better. It's the fucking beat. That shit is fucking. But oh my god, when I first heard the song, man, I never heard a fucking beat that was so mysterious in my damn life. I mean. Straight up, man. I'm not. I'm not lying. I'm just telling the fucking truth. You know, Tupac once again just talking about get out of jail. Don't start trouble. Fuck niggas up, killing niggas like always who come across his way. You know what I mean? He's going to handle them. And no, he's not. A, and he, and everybody's going to say that he's a threat. You know what I mean? And Pac don't fuck around. It's the truth. Um, track number twelve, Black Starry Night, interlude. That's like a little interlude, you no know I mean, you no know, pot just talking. And the last track, track number 13, Only Fair Duff. Fucking dark ass banger right there. It's like so fucking scary. You no know, Tupac just talking about what's going to happen if you pass away. Like, pretty much a duff experience. That's what I got from the song. Okay. By far, the best Pac posthumous album. In my opinion, I mean, this shit is fucking dope as hell. I mean, definitely love the production on this album. I mean, like, like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of posthumous albums. When it comes to this, this is a fucking exception. To me, this album right here, Until the End of Time, um, Still I Rise, and Better Days are like my favorite um, posthumous Pac albums. Probably like the best ones. Because the ones after that, like, Loyal to the Game and Pac's Life, them shits was fucking horrible. Yes, I said it, horrible. Well, Loyal to the Game, I didn't like Loyal to the Game at all because, like, the production from Eminem was fucking out of place, in my opinion. Like, he, you know, computer, like, M trying to fucking computerize Pac vocals and shit. Like, having Jada Kiss and Obi Trice on the album, it's like, what the fuck? Like, I just, I mean... There's probably one or two songs I actually liked in the album, but it was a no-go for me. Wasn't really fucking at all. Like Eminem fucked up the whole album. Like if you he should have left the the tracks alone. The Pop's Life did not really care for that album at all myself. But I rather listen to Loyal to the Game over Pop's Life. That's just me. But this album shits on all of them. Yes, I said it. Because one thing. Some of the beats on this album are not 
fuck with. They're just straight OG, just straight fucking early 90s material pop before he joined Death Row. You know what I mean? Like, I just definitely love the whole fucking atmosphere, the whole concept of this album. Like, it's so amazing. You know what I mean? Like, definitely one of my favorite Pac albums besides Me Against the World. You know, Strictly for My Niggas, Two Apocalypse Now, and All Eyes on Me. Like, this is a very dope album right here to me. Underrated. A lot of people don't really talk about this album. But this album was very highly anticipated when it first came out a year after he passed away. And, you know, it was very successful. Sold millions of copies worldwide. So happy to own this shit because I'm a fucking Pac fan. Definitely, you are not, if, like, you can't be a Tupac fan if you don't own this album in your collection. I mean, straight up, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're a fan of, you know, Tupac, fan of, you know, West Coast hip-hop, fan of, you know, like, that old, you know what I mean? Fan of, you know, Thug Life, if you fan of, you know, Tupac lives now, strictly for my niggas, Thug Life, and me against the world, then this is the album for you to check out, you know what I mean? So... This is around the time when Pac was in the Bay Area, so you get that little vibe on this album. So yeah, so this is Tupac, Are You Still Down, Remember Me, released in 1997, Moth Cop. Pick it up, you Tupac fan. By the way, rest in peace. So yeah, folks, that was it for the video. That was volume 6 of my rap album update. Stay tuned for some more shit. Hope y'all enjoy it. Salute.